Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials in quantum statistics. This is video number 20. I'm going to discuss the density of states. This is the second sub video in this particular section where I'm going to discuss the vector k space and vector n space. The previous video to this is the density of states number one. And I'd also like to remind you that I've set up a website called universityphysicstutorials.com where I've got all my videos listed and archived. So, let's do a small bit of revision. In quantum physics, or quantum mechanics, we want to be able to characterize or analyze the behavior of something, let's say an electron. In order to do this, we must find its, or we must calculate its wave function, which means we must sh solve the Schrodinger equation. So, the most simple Schrodinger equation to solve is for a particle in an infinite potential well. This is where you begin with every problem, full stop. That's where you begin. So, in order to analyze the behavior of our particle, which we our gen generic particle, we said it's an infinite potential well, and we came up with the wave function of a to the e, e to the i k dot r, where k and r were vectors, okay, and we found that k had, there were limits on what the values that k could have, because it was 2 pi over a times n, so that would be k sub, we'll say, uh, k sub 1 was 2 pi over a times n sub 1 and so on. That's what we found. Okay, where do we go from here? Now the point here is this, that the wave function cannot have any values of k and r. It, it, it is not allowed to have every value of k and r. It can only have values of k which are equal to 2 pi over a, a being, sorry, excuse me, a being the width of our well, okay? It can have, k is only allowed to have values which are equal to 2 pi over a times an integer n. So the whole point is, is really this. The wave function can't have every value. It must have values which are limited by k. k all itself cannot have any value. It must, it's limited by values of n. And n is an integer. It's 1, 2, 3, and so on. So instead of looking at the, of evaluating or analyzing the wave function, it's probably easier to instead look at k because we're really only looking at numbers instead of having this complex exponential function. But similarly, instead of looking at k, well, why would you look at k when we can look at n, which is simply just the number? All right? The point here is this, that by looking at the allowed values of n, we're able to work out the allowed values of k. By working out the allowed values of k, we're able to work out the allowed values of the wave function. Why is that interesting? Well, think about it. The wave function gives us the energy. If we know the allowed value of the wave values of the wave function, we know the allowed value values of energy, the allowed values of momentum, the allowed values of velocity. We know everything. So the whole point is, we look at instead of looking at the the wave function stuff, we look at this quantum number n. So let's see, let's see what this does. Let's see, let's see where we go from here. Okay. So. The values of um, the values of k, you know, they they're they're set by two pi over n. So we can plot them. It's it's a good way to analyze any situation is by plotting the values which are allowed. So you might have k sub x, k sub y, and k sub z. Now we're talking about vectors, so these vector their directions of course matter. So there's our k vector here, like that. Okay, and here is a single point. So this particular value of the k vector has a certain value of k sub x, it has a certain value of k sub y, and it has a certain value of k sub z. Okay? And those three together give the total k vector, which gives us the total wave function and the total energy. Okay? Now, um, yes, okay, now just for a, a brief aside, let's talk about the difference between vector and scalar states. So if we're talking about vectors, vectors, the direction matters, okay? So let's say we're talking about a vector momentum here, okay? So there's, there's the state for our vector momentum, okay? Now, this, this momentum here is not the same momentum. Let's say it has the same magnitude. The reason it's not the same vector momentum is it has a different direction. So in order to calculate or to characterize the vector, vector states, you must look at particular points in the space. Each of these points has a different value of your vector because they have different direction. If, however, you're talking about scalar states, this time 
all that matters is the magnitude. So if we sweep out in two dimensions, the magnitude we get a circle, or in three dimensions, the magnitude we get a sphere. So if you want to look at all the points in scalar space with the same value of, of, your, of your vector, well then you look at the volume, or excuse me, the surface area of a sphere, and if you want to look, about, look at it in, uh, in vector space, you must count the number of states that are there, or are, are available. I hope that's uh, reasonably clear. I'll be talking about that more in a moment. So, if we plot, we're able to plot our k values. But I said a moment ago that k actually depends on n. So n is the more fundamental quantity. It's the fundamental quantum number in this particular case. So what happens if we plot n? Well, let's plot what we call n space. So you have n sub x, n sub y, and n sub z. Now, n must be an integer. So it must go, there is n sub x. It must be up here, n sub y. It must be here, n sub z. It must be an integer. So let's say this is 2, or this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. So the value of 1.1, n, n sub x equal to 1.1, is not allowed. If you had, you are not allowed a value of n sub x equal to 1.1, therefore there is no particular energy associated with the value of n sub x equal to 1.1. Similarly, there is none for, I don't know, n sub y is equal to 4.3. It must be characterized by integers. Now, the reason n space is so useful is as follows. The volume in n space, it, the, in order to count the number of states, you just count, you just get the volume. Now, let's look at this. Let's say I have a unit volume in n space. So here's, here's my unit volume. It's a, it's a cube. So I've plotted eight of my states in n space. Okay, I've just taken, let's say, let's say I've taken this here. My drawing, by the way, is shocking. Okay, so here we have eight, we have, as a result, we've got eight of our n space dots. But they're shared, they're being shared here. How many actual dots does this particular unit cell have? Now, this is, this is pretty, stra pretty straightforward solid state physics. Because, let's we'll say this, this dot here, well, it's being shared by the unit cell I've drawn in red plus the, the volume I've drawn in green it's also being shared by the one I'm, I'm now drawing in black and so on okay so you can you can take it that this one dot is being shared in actual fact by eight other cells so the amount of this dot here the amount of this guy owned by this red cell is one eighth the amount of this dot owned by that red cell is one eighth but there are eight dots so the total, we we'll say, number of dots, or the number of states in a unit volume is actually one. So for every unit volume in n space, you have one state. So to count the number of states, you just count the volume. And that's why n, that's why n space is so useful. Because you're able to count the total number of states, the total number of allowed energy states, whatever it is, by just, count, just getting the volume. And you'll see in a moment that that is not the case for k space, momentum space, energy space, because, for that, that exact reason, because there, they aren't, there isn't a unit separation between them in other, in other spaces. But because there is a unit separation in n space, the number of states is simply calculated by the volume. Okay, I hope that's pretty straightforward. Now, what is the volume? Well, the, the total number of states we said at the very start of the first video, the total number of states is g sub s. That's the number of microstates. But we've just said that the number of microstates is just the volume. Well, the volume is just going to be dn sub x, dn sub y, dn sub z. Now, this is the total number of states in, uh, in, your, in your space. Okay? And this, I suppose, really is all, that, that's it. And that this is such a simple formula. You'll see in a moment that all the other ones, have this, they will have a scaling factor, which will make it more difficult but the n space does not have the scaling factor, or you might say the scaling factor is 1, if you like. All right? So what about k space? What happens if we want to plot the number of states in k space, in vector k space? Well, we saw a moment ago that k was equal to 2 pi over a times n in one dimension. Now, an important theorem. So let's say f is a function of x, it's a function of y and z. In order to get df, you must get del f del x times dx plus del f 
del y dy plus del f del uh, z dz. That's and for however number of variables you have. So that's how you get you know um, the incremental or the uh, the infinitesimal change. Now in this case, k is only a function of n. So I'm suppose I'm going to do this a small bit of overkill. That means dk is equal to del k del n times dn, which is equal to 2 pi over a times dn. It's overkill in one dimension, but it's an important thing. If you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you don't think about it that way in one dimension, you'll be lost when you come to three dimensions of more or more. Okay, so that means the scale, going from dk, or sorry, from dk to dn, we scale by this 2 pi over a, or dn is equal to a over 2 pi times dk. So that's the scale. The scaling factor going from n space to k space is this a over 2 pi. So let's go back up here. We said a moment ago that the number of states in vector n space is d n sub x, d n sub y, d n sub z. We also said that d n is equal to a over 2 pi d k. That means that the number of states in vector k space is equal to a cubed over 2 pi to be cubed d k sub x, d k sub y, d k sub z. Now a, remember the start was just the length of our of our of our, sp our space, so a cubed is going to be the volume. So the number of states in vector k space is the volume in k space d k d y d d z but multiplied by this scaling factor. So no more can you count the number of states by just getting the volume. It's an actual fact changed by this factor, v over 2 pi cubed. And it only gets more complicated when you go to momentum and energy. So hopefully you can see why we try to characterize the number of states, or the density of states, by this, uh, by this um, n, by this n quantum number. Okay, I'm going to stop there for this particular video. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might even check out my, my, um, my website. Thank you. Goodbye.